service station debit card. See dealer for complete details. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this nice-looking Thursday morning. Long before Donald Trump was a politician, and I still don't think he is a politician, um, I read his book called The Art of the Deal. And, and back in those days, you know, nobody made fun of his hair when he was a younger guy. I think because he got older. <laughs> I think so. That's what it is. You get older, you, you start looking funny, don't you? Uh, I can speak because that's happening to me. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I read his book because I was very interested in those days, and I still am, actually, in, you know, the ideas that you can parlay, I like that word, it's almost like I speak French, ideas that you can parlay into a money-making idea. Take an idea and make money with it, whether it's something as simple. What did I see the other day? I saw these kids, they were taking oranges, and they were, they were cutting them similar to the way you cut a pumpkin, and they were gutting them but leaving the core, and then filling them with wax and selling them at the flea market and, and selling them as orange-scented candles, actually made out of the orange rind, mm-hmm. which was kind of cool. Now, yeah. there's an entrepreneur. Those kids are going to become entrepreneurs. So, somebody like Donald Trump had, I, I guess he had some kind of seed money from his father. I never really knew how much. I know he said it in the book, but I, I forget. I think recently somebody published it was a million dollars. But the point is, whatever you have, you can invest it, whether it, even if it's just time or like oranges, like in these kids' case, and then and then make it grow. And and I think a true entrepreneur also builds a business to the point where he says, eh, I think I'll let it go, let somebody else have it. And then you sell the business, and that's even cool. Then the so you not only make money from the business, but you make money selling the business. Um, yes. Rod Robertson has a book that'll help us with this, with the questions we have about this. Rod is a financial guru that specializes in business mergers and acquisitions. He's the managing partner of Briggs Capital. He's a motivational speaker. His book is an eye-opener. It's called Winning at Entrepreneurship, Insider's Tips on Buying, Building, and Selling Your Own Business. Good morning, Rod. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Thank you for being on the air with us today. Great. Let me ask you about the buying part. Um... I, do, do you like buying somebody else's idea, or are you more interested in having your own idea and making a business out of it? Well, you know, t- in today's day and age, it's so much easier. There's so much money, and everyone's familiar now with buying and and having your own business. In the old days, it was a dream. Now it can become a reality because of the money's available, and society has shifted and allows young people old people, any people, to become an entrepreneur and chase their dream. How do you, how do you um, take an idea and evaluate it before you move forward with it, whether it's your own idea, somebody else's idea, or, or an already established business that you're being solicited to buy? You know, starting a business is, is a lot of fun, but it's a long haul. Because when you're buying an existing business, you know, anything from a retail store to a manufacturing company or anything, it's already up and running. So when you're looking at starting a business, you may have a brilliant idea. But when you have a brilliant idea that's totally new, it's, you're going to be facing really difficult sailing because you have to get over the skeptics who don't believe in it and why isn't somebody else already doing it. Right. So you right. have to, when you start a business, you have to really have an extra six months to a year to, to get it on the road. So let me ask you your opinion on this. This is probably going to get some people angry. I always think Ray Kroc, who bought the, the original McDonald's restaurant, was an entrepreneur because he bought somebody else's idea and he made it his own. I think everybody who buys a, uh, a, a franchise restaurant for McDonald's it really isn't an entrepreneur. They're a businessman, mm-hmm. but it's somebody else's completely uh, already established idea. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just saying the word entrepreneur to me always means somebody more, a little bit more creative. Did I just ruffle some feathers in your world, or, or do you mm-hmm. agree with me? You know, I, I really think that's an interesting thought pattern. 
I mean, when you go to buy, people always look at franchises as, as an option where you can buy a business that has already been proven, so it takes a lot of risk out of the deal. Yeah. But when you're buying a franchise, still, it's like 70% sour grapes after a couple of years. People are really, most of them are bummed out. And then who can you sell a franchise to? Only to another franchisee. And most of them don't work. So if you have a franchise that you bought, how can you exit to somebody? There's only going to be people that are going to pay you short change. So when you're buying a franchise, it's it's you just have to have in mind you're going to make it work well, get a good salary, but there's not going to be the big bonanza sale at the end like if you start really? something new. So if there was a contest and the prize was to have lunch with you, and I could ask you any questions I wanted to, which I, I guess that's kind of what we're doing right now. Yes. <laughs> and by the way, listeners, you can you can ask questions too. The phone lines mm-hmm. are open, 622-9622. So let's say I said to you, look, I just inherited $50,000. It's, mm-hmm. it's probably not a whole lot as far as buying a restaurant is concerned, but I'm thinking about either buying you know, an established franchise, an Olive Garden or something, mm-hmm. or just starting my own Larry's Italian restaurant or something. What's your advice? Start my own or get the franchise? Well, you know what? I believe if you had $50,000, you're not going to be able to buy a business with 50000 Say if it was like buying a house and you had 50000 down, you could buy a house for $250,000. You're not going to be able to make a living off of a $50,000 investment. So what I would say is you take your $50,000 and you go to wealthier people that you know and say, look, I'm going to put $50,000 into this business that I'm going to buy. I want you to be my passive silent partners, and I want you people to put up 500000 So now all of a sudden you have, say, a half a million dollars cash. Now you could buy a $2 million business, which should show off, I mean, throw off considerable income where everyone can make a six-figure living and your investors could be paid back. So, so I think you got to have the threshold of two hundred and fifty to $500,000 to buy a meaningful business as a down payment. But when you use the word passive investor, that sounds to me like they wouldn't have a say-so. So so if I was debating between you, okay, now I have their money and, uh, and I'm still thinking uh, Olive Garden or Larry's Italian Restaurant. Don't they have a say-so in which, which direction I go with that money? Yeah. You know, the, the majority of first-round money is what we call family and friends, and it's outlined in my book, all these different stages of money that you can get. Hmm. And, you know, the family and friends, you know, it, it, it sometimes it's, it's really awful. Every time you go home, your mother-in-law's sitting on the couch yelling at you about her 401 money that you... Everyone <laughs> has ideas, and these people are not professional investors. So it's just mm. going to be a lot of static and a lot of headache. You want to find professional investors, which is the next level up from friends and family called angel investors, who can give you good advice and who aren't you know squealing every time there is a <laughs> downturn in the financials and that are, are going to let you run your business. That does sound good. Is, is good. that what they do on that television show Shark Tank? Because I could never figure that out because usually the people that are there – pitching to them they've already got an idea they've already manufactured the product the product is already on the shelves but yet they're asking for money and you think that would be the end all would be when the product is on the shelves and you just have to do the marketing and the advertising you know, I've coached three or four different groups that have been on uh, Shark Tank, and uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of hot air there. But those people are very sharp on the show, and I, I think it reflects well on the entrepreneurial world. You know, by the time you get on that show, you got to have a good, sexy product. Maybe not sexy, but something that'll interest the general public. Those, the majority of those people that get on that show are successful thereafter. Maybe not so much from what they're doing on the show, but once you're you get your ticket punched on that show, uh, everyone's going to swarm you when you're done. Oh. Do you know, not to um, boast about the profession that Robin and I are in, and I'm not specifically saying this radio station, but in general, the media, I, I, I've noticed that when there's a new business in town that I, I guess they just don't advertise, and it has nothing to do, I'm not saying us, but in general, they just don't advertise. You know they disappear real soon. Yeah. So is that a big mistake, is not taking part of your money and, and investing in advertising? Well, one of the things that uh, I am really focused in, I have the good fortune to teach at the Harvard Business School and some other major institutions, guest lecture at these places, is everyone always talks about buying the business. What I am concerned with is the people that have bought a business 
and are running out of gas or they're what they call i uh, i call is the highway to business hell hmm. how you're going to get out of the pickle that you got yourself into without uh, losing everything and you know 70 percent of people fail by the the second year those are the 70 percent of the people that i'm concerned with that they don't ruin their life their personal relationship and go bankrupt oh yeah the, the book has that and more we have to take a little break and then we'll be back to learn some more about this if you are interested in asking a question directly you are invited to do that the number is 622-9622 rod robertson is our expert right now he's the author of the book winning at entrepreneurship insider's tip on buying, building, and selling your own business. We'll take a break and be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For today, sunshine mixed with clouds and quite warm high, 85 to 89. Hardly cloudy tonight, low 69 well inland, 75 along the coast. But tomorrow and Saturday, times of sun and clouds. There can be a shower with thunderstorm in spots, mainly during the afternoon hours of each day. The high both days, 85 to 89. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Whether you're building it up or knocking it down, get it done, rent it now. Sunbelt Rentals is here to make your job a little easier. Our knowledgeable staff will help you find the right equipment for any job, big or small. Did you know that Sunbelt Rentals carries heaters, air conditioners, generators, lighting, traffic control, and so much more? So whether you're building it up or knocking it down, we've got the equipment you need. Get it done, rent it now. And right now, for a limited time, you can have it for less. Just by mentioning this ad, if you read it Friday afternoon, you can keep it the whole weekend and only pay for one day. But this is a limited time offer, so stop into Sunbelt Rentals today, Northwest 27th, just a quarter mile east of I-75. For more information, just give us a call, 352-369-9101. 352-369-9101. Sunbelt Rentals. Get it done, rent it now. 352-369-9101. Hi, Matt Wilkerson here, your mobile Verizon rep. But not just here, I'll deliver the phone to you in your home. While I'm there, I'll only sell you what you need and I'll personalize it to you. Want to have me get you connected? Then call me at 352-528-0020. I even offer unlimited home phone service for just $20 per month. Just call me, your mobile Verizon rep, at 352-528-0020. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy. Never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results. And all but given up on my sex life. Then, I found the doctors at New Mayo Medical Center. Wow! They made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Mail treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. All right, 18 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. On the phone is Rod Robertson. He's the author of the book called Winning at Entrepreneurship. He's got some credentials to uh, impress upon you the fact that he knows what he's talking about when it comes to investing your money. You know what I wanted to ask you, Rod, real quickly? We were talking about um, in, in finding investors. What if you could be the potential investor? Uh, f- for example, I heard you mentioned, Robin, that you uh, did a little research on our demographics of this audience, and you were right. We have a lot of retired people here. Some of them have a nice little nest egg that could easily be a temptation for you know the nephew with the good idea. So, so let's say the nephew with the good idea comes to me, and I'm that retired guy, and he says, "Hey, Uncle Larry, I got an idea, and I'm going to need a hundred thousand dollars. Can you help me out? Mm-hmm. How do I know? I mean, he's, he's family. Do I do I just say no? I mean, how do I weigh it? How do I know what's what's a good thing to invest in? 
you know, this is exactly how some fantastic businesses get started. You know, the nephew coming to the family member. And if you're sitting back and uh, you, as a potential investor, you have to segment. It's like playing poker. How much money you can go to the, that Friday night poker game with, how much you're willing to lose, and how much you're going to put in, and you have to not go further and re, you know and keep your discipline. You can't mess with your total nest egg and, and your livelihood. But if you have extra money and you really believe it sounds like a good idea with the nephew or with the nephew's friend or a team of young people or people that you know in, in, in midlife that have left a corporation but have a great idea about doing something, I, I think it's a, a great way, and it's it's all about America to to invest in new in new strategies, new plans, and new companies. Do you know what I, I noted one time that uh, some of the magazines that are out there, Fortune maybe is one of them, and but some of the magazines will feature every year uh, a young entrepreneur who mm-hmm. over the past year went from rags to riches. There's always a story like that, and even during the worst part of the uh, the last recession. There were those stories, and so I'm I'm always amazed that while the rest of the world is is saying it's a dismal scene, it's pointless, we're we're all going down the tubes. There's still somebody out there who doesn't want to hear any of it and proves that well that might be what you're saying, but this is what I'm doing. There's always somebody out there who's doing who's going to do well in in the coming year. Yeah, I totally agree. They. Th- what you want to do as an investor in a business, or really for someone that's finding a business, you have to know something about it. I mean, even if you're buying, and what I like is buying a business that's already been started by somebody who's run out of gas, who's maybe not a practical business person, but a great idea person, find that person who has something good, have them lateral the ball to you, you j- and you just take off with someone else's good idea, but you just do it with better blocking and tackling of business, sales, marketing, understanding social media application to the new company. If you have somebody that's in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, and they don't know how to market in today's digital environment, right. then you know what? Take that business over and in- inject it with your own steroids of the new wo- way of life, and the business could very well flourish and make you a handsome living. Okay, so let's look at that for a second. Let's say I'm uh, not as savvy with the Internet, and um, I, I think that the, we should be sending mail, and my nephew says, no, that costs too much postage. We'll just do email. Good idea or bad idea? Well, I, you know, with all due respect to you, you know, I think the latter goes further than uh, emails. It's It's Twitter. It's... The, the marketing for small businesses now, 40 to 50% of it is being done through social media and driving people to your website. Hmm. What you're talking is about outgoing marketing. You want to drive inbound marketing where people come to you so you don't need as many salespeople or the traditional you know, guys banging the phone and get out there calling. You know, those people just can't make enough. You've got to have volume driven to you no matter what type it is, and, and, and that's just uh, the facts of the new world. I like that. I like that. And uh, really already established businesses, they're not a bad thing because they have a hierarchy, and people have to start somewhere. So there really shouldn't be anything wrong with working for somebody else and accumulating some funds by yourself that you can self-fund your entrepreneurial project. Right. I, I think getting out there and taking a proven idea and just doing it better, faster, with more mojo, more energy, and getting out there and just working it real hard. There, there's no magic to business. I mean, you know, there, we all hear about the tricky guy or the new phenom, but no. It's a day after day, sale after sale, hour after hour, you, but you have to realize when you have your own business, there's no going home. The, you know, in your brain, though, everything trickles behind you, and you're sitting down, and you're absentmindedly looking at the TV, or you're out in the backyard looking over the fence. You're you're not at the house. You're at work, and that's the that's a real cutoff for some people. Do they have the the horsepower and the mental power to just want to do it seven days a week mentally? So we're talking to the people who do. That those are the people we want to know about the book. The book is called Winning at Entrepreneurship. I, I'm trying to think of the best way to be fair to the book. Um, it's wonderful. If, if I give you some of the titles of some of the chapters for the listeners, there's one chapter called Raising Cash. That ought to raise your eyebrows. <laughs> um, valuation, what is it really worth? Buying an existing business. I'm just reading some of the, uh, some of the chi- uh, chapter titles. Buying a franchise. 
um, buying a job or lifestyle business. What is that about? Mm-hmm. What is that chapter about? That's, that's what we just talked about, buying a business where you, uh, like a franchise where you don't have to get, you know, uh, you're not going to make uh, $10 million when you exit, but buying a business that you can run and work at your own speed and your own oh, tempo I see. I see. and not kill yourself. How about people that have ideas that um, aren't the normal ideas and then they want to generate interest, so they get people interested in hiring them or uh, purchasing their product? Well, you know, that's a whole different animal than, uh, you know, the arena that we're really talking about because I'm always after the how... What is the highest percentage way for someone to be successful? <clears throat> if on, in my book, I've accumulated, I've owned three businesses, two I did great with, one that I crashed and burned. Oh. So I've, and then I, you know, I teach at these institutions and I'm just with thousands of people all the time. And that's why I wrote this book. It's a guide to how to do it, but also how to avoid mistakes if you're already on the playing field. And my book's website is winning e. Dot com, just the letter E, and uh, you can go there, and uh, you know, I'll be glad to sign an autograph a book for anyone that goes to the website, and uh, I'm always willing to listen and hear from entrepreneurs and, and give them coaching and guidance, because uh, the book and myself can save people from making really bad mistakes. Nice. Right, winninge.com. Um, what about real estate as a business? In other words, the buying and flipping or selling of real mm-hmm. estate? Yeah, I mean that it's real estate is a, a is an infinitely more safe game to play than uh you know business, but you need a lot of money to play the real estate game. I mean you, you got if whatever homes you got to have the down payments, you got to have fix, you got to pay the mortgages. So that is for people with more money to spend. You can start a businesses by you know lo- you know just lumping together people's money and just go go go. Mhm. The the um, the angel investors that you mentioned earlier, or, or is that like if I were to Google that, I'm, I'm guessing I'd, I'd come across a lot of scams. How do I know who the right ones are? Well, you know, and again, I'm not pitching the book, but in the back of my book, I have lists of angel investors, all the different groups, the societies where you can go to find these people. In every county in this country, there's angel investors at work that are professional investors. But when you try to find your advisor to coach you, if you don't know, the simple question to ask that advisor is, tell me about the last five successful deals that you've done and tell me about your failures. If the people that start horsing around with the, and running in circles with the stories, you know there's somebody to stay away from. <laughs> like anything else, yeah. you want the doctor that's done 6,000 operations, not the new guy out of medical school. Uh, you spoke earlier about social media, but what do you think about those sites that are called like GoFundMe and things like that, where people just are asking ordinary people for money. You know, I'm working on a couple big overseas projects where we're doing that. That, uh, and I, I, I don't. It's working with certain people, but it's unregulated. So there's a lot of people get very angry, and there's a lot of people losing their money. But it's it's a legitimate way, but you really have to do your own homework. You can't rely on anyone but yourself. But when you're putting that kind of money in, $100, 500 or 1000 mm-hmm. I think most people, uh, investors, can lose that type of money without getting too grouchy. Oh. <laughs> Rod Robertson is our guest. We have about a minute left, so let me give away the book that he sent to us. It's called Winning at Entrepreneurship. You can have the copy I have. Call me. It's uh, 622-9622. The rest of us have to go buy it. The website that Rod gave us is Winning. E, the letter E, winning E, all one word, uh, dot com. And um, I'm guessing the book is available at uh, all, where all bookstores, uh, I'm sorry, we're all, what am I trying to say? Sold. Yeah, where all books are <laughs> sold, am I right? <laughs> yep, and uh, you can find it on Amazon, online, Kindle, uh, or you just go to the website and I'd be glad to, to crank some out for you. What does the E stand for? Entrepreneurship. Ah, okay. Winning.e.com. Ron, thank you so much. This is a, a fascinating topic. And, and by the way, those those kids with the with the orange sh- rind candles. Yes. Assuming they come out of this with a nice profit, they could. I mean, if they've got the brains, they can. Next week, come up back with something better and bigger and make more money. They they could be the kids who are the next Donald Trumps and, and big entrepreneurs, don't right. you think? I think if you. Tr- those kids and if there's five of them i think two of them sound like they have the the right stuff to be an entrepreneur (laughs) uh ron thank you thank you for being on there with us it was a a fun conversation okay thanks so much and it was my pleasure 
You're welcome. We'll be right back. It just got harder to reach Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. Lufthansa saying it's suspending all...